Hey guys, this is John. All right, at long last, it is here. Duretsky's Endgame Manual on Chessable. Yes, I think this has been our most requested book over the past two years. I wanted to start this preview by saying rest in peace to Mark Duretsky. He unfortunately passed away in 2016. Uh, his impact on the game is extraordinary. In my mind, he is the most impactful chess author and trainer of all time. I think if you were to take a poll of grandmasters and strong players and ask them, what are the books that you've learned the most from in chess? I think Duretsky's Endgame Manual and other books by Mark Duretsky are going to be like right at the top of the list, probably the most popular ones. Uh, Duretsky's Endgame Manual is his magnum opus. This is the book he's going to be best remembered by, which is interesting because it was published for the first time in 2003. It's a fairly new book by Chess Book Standards, but it's that good that it's already been accepted as um, a modern classic. But he's wrote many other good books. Uh, speaking from my own experience, Secrets of Chess Tactics is a favorite, Positional Play, Attack and Defense, the list goes on. So uh, thank you to Mark Duretsky for leaving this legacy for us future generations of chess players to learn from. I also wanted to say thanks to Russell Enterprises. They're the publisher of Duretsky's Endgame Manual. They're very easy to work with. And yeah, thank you for allowing us to share this on Chessable. So. I can't do this book justice in a single preview video, but I do want to show you how you can use Duretsky's Endgame Manual on Chessable, how you can get the most from your study on here. So let's look at the raw stats of this book. So this book has 1,029 trainable variations, 201 informational lines, and 228 puzzles. So that's, that's a lot of material. Combine that with 200,000 words of instruction. This will keep you busy. This is a challenging book. This is a book for ambitious players. Duretsky definitely wrote for players who are looking to get better. Uh, if you're a pure beginner, I would not tackle this book. If you've never studied the end game before, I would not sit down and, and try to work your way through this because it's going to drive you insane. Um, probably want to look for something more like 100 end games you must know before you get into this. But if you're an ambitious chess player and you really, really want to improve your game, this is the end game book to study at some stage. So there's some praise for the book here. Uh, we'll look at the chapter breakdown in a second. I also wanted to say thanks to one of our users. Uh, he's a power user on Chessable, Logozar. He's awesome. He helped beta test this book for us. Uh, there were other beta testers too, but he's one that stands out. He racked up over 200,000 points beta testing this book. We also ran six-man table bases on this book just to check everything for accuracy. We're probably going to run seven-man table bases too, just so everything's nice and tight. Okay, so let's go into the book. So Duretsky's Endgame Manual covers the spectrum of endgame theory and practice. It's not a, a reference manual per se. Uh, some other books come to mind for that, where you know, you're more look, looking up a position. Uh, Duretsky's Endgame Manual, it more so teaches you how to properly play endgames at a high level. Like that's what I, the, the best way I could describe it. And covers all types of endgames. Starts with pawn endgames. You can see the first three chapters devoted to pawn endgames. Then knights, knight versus pawns. Some knight endgames. Gets into bishop endgames. Uh, rook versus pawn. Rook versus knight. The rook endgame section. So this is referring to usually rook versus rook with pawns involved. This is an excellent part of the book. That's my favorite part of the book, actually. I recently looked at this series of chapters uh, when... I was preparing for some of my GM norm tournaments and I wanted to beef up my end game theory. I tackled that and I really, really love the way that uh, Duretsky ties in a lot of his practical experience in studying these positions. So he'll, he'll often talk about how he's studied various end games for like months or years at a time and his opinion of them has changed when he's looked at them and also looked with other players. He often would run training sessions and give like a position that he's been curious about from an academic point of view to um, his, uh, his students and say, well, what do you think about my findings in this position? And then they would maybe find something new and he would actually put that in the book. So yeah, I really love that section of the book. Later you can see Rook versus Bishop, Queen Endgames, and then some more rare material relations and also general endgame ideas. So tons and tons of endgame material to keep you busy. Now, the way that this book is formatted, and this is probably the most uh, important thing I'll say as far as using Chessable for, for Duretsky's Endgame Manual book, uh, Endgame Manual, is 
So when Doretsky wrote this, and I think I can actually show this on screen. Yeah. I think you guys will be able to see this. So if you see this, uh, I don't even know where my fingers are, right here. So this blue text, the blue text, throughout the book, there is blue text separated from the black text. And the blue text are the most important positions and like the essential positions to know, according to Duretsky. Uh, I think there's about 200 of them in the book. So the way that I tackled this book when I first did it way back when is I went through the blue positions first. I studied all the blue positions and then I went back and tackled the other stuff. And I think that's the best way to approach this book, actually. Um, the blue positions will give you the essential knowledge. It's not as in-depth. You're not going to get bogged down, but they're the positions that you really got to know. So what we did for this book is we created a special learn next button where, and I got to adjust this here actually, because I had this on everything. So the default mode for this book is right here. So under the learn, under course options, important only. That refers to the blue positions. And by just having that selected and then clicking learn next, you will get all of those blue positions and you can work through them. And I would highly recommend you do that before tackling everything else. So let's take a look at this one. This is a pawn end game. Okay, white playing d5. Uh, and now running with the outside pawn because black's king is going to be blocked. Hoisted by his own petard. Yeah, so make black take and then run. Yeah, and black can't step into the square with king d5 because his own pawn is blocking. As Duretsky talks about. So if I click next lesson, it'll take me to the next blue position which are kind of skipping around the book, but that's the way that Duretsky intended it. Uh, so let's go back out here. I always do that. I always like exit out. <laughs> I forget that you can go directly to the book. Um, but so let's say you've done all the blue positions and you want to tackle everything else in the book, or you're just interested in everything else. You can change under the course options again, just change the learn to everything. And now when I click learn next, it's going to pick me up where I left off. So this is not a blue position, but it's in the book. Yeah, it looks like, oh, I think this was like a tragic comedy position. So in Duretsky's books, he often has these sections called tragic comedies, where one side or sometimes even both sides make blunders back and forth, and he uses them for illustrative purposes. So yeah, this is an informational couple of lines here. But yeah, that looked like a tragic comedy. Okay, so here's a quiz. So there are quizzes throughout the book. So here's one I can try to solve, black to play. Position from 1887, okay. Well, B4 definitely looks like the most obvious move. Trying to trade off here. Black is playing for a draw in this position. So B4. If white bypasses with c4, I don't want to play b5 because then c5. That would be bad. We're going to lose our pawns or white's going to promote. So I think we want to go b4, c4, then b3. Does that work? Because if white takes king here and then we will succeed in drawing. b4, c4, b3. What if white plays a3? We definitely have to figure that out. B, C, B4, C4, B3, A3. And then if B5, C5, I think we're going to lose. What if King A5? King A5, and then, okay, King A5, white takes on B3, King A6. King b4, probably. That also feels like we're going to lose. Unless I can take the opposition somehow. All right, this is good. Brushing up on my end games, <laughs> especially basic pawn end games. So, even though b4 is such an obvious move, I might not want to play it directly. Because I can't figure out in that line b4, c4, b3. By the way, you can see the timer is ticking down kind of slower. That's, again, adjustable under the options there.
Maybe I can draw that position. I think I can actually. So let's go for this. And now I believe this must be played. And now retreat. So white's gonna win that pawn. But yeah, I think I can hold here. King a6. And now king b a king a7, so I can meet king b5 with king b7. White can play a4, but then I go to one of the sides. I think I should go to c7. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this position's critical. I think I go to c7, but let me make sure. c7, a6, c6. Yeah. And now keep the opposition. Don't let white seize the opposition back. Okay. Who? Wipe the sweat off my brow. Didn't embarrass myself on, on screen here. <laughs> but yeah, so this was not a blue position, but in the same chapter, pawn endgames, just going sequentially, looking at everything, everything mode. Okay, so let's go back. Going into the chapter breakdown again. So I would definitely suggest doing the important ones first and then tackling the everything. Uh, once more, there's lots of toggleable toggleable options here. So you can change up how you want to study, how you want to review, how many uh, reps you do. Also the depth. This is not so applicable to an uh, endgame repertoire per se, but if you were learning an opening repertoire and you really only wanted to know the essential first few moves, you could change the depth. Let's say you didn't want to know 20 moves of theory, you want to know five. That's an option you have there. Uh, and also the timer too. So if you have any questions about the actual material in Duretsky's endgame manual, please let us know. Again, it's just not possible for me to cover everything in a preview video, so I'm not going to get into uh, everything in the book. There's been a lot written about this. As I said, it covers the entire spectrum of the endgame. Very, very good resource for ambitious players. And we're really honored to have it on our site. So once more, if you have any questions about how to use Dretzky's Endgame Manual on the site or about the material itself in the book, let us know. But I think you will be pleased with this and you will have dozens and dozens, hundreds of hours of Endgame study with this book. So thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.